Sultan Pasha al-Atrash was born in 1881 into a powerful Arab family of landowners in the village of al qurayya in Ottoman Syria. He was loyal to the Ottoman Empire and he gained the prestigious title of Pasha because of his bravery while fighting against British and French forces during World War I. However, his relationship with the Ottoman government became tense after the new Ottoman nationalist government began discriminating against Arabs. Shortly after his father was executed by the Ottomans, Sultan Pasha turned against the Ottoman government and joined the Arab rebellion against the Ottomans in 1916. Shortly after Ottoman forces were removed from Syria, it was occupied by the French army. When the French invaded and occupied Syria, Sultan Pasha also revolted against the French. He stated, Experience has proven that rights are taken and not given, so let us take our rights by the edge of the sword, and let us ask for death and we shall be granted life. Sultan Pasha al-Atrash revolted against the French authorities on multiple occasions and they could not crush his resistance movement. Because of his rebelliousness and his huge influence in Syrian society, the French authorities offered Sultan al-Atrash an independent autonomous state in the Jabal al-Arab region. However, Sultan Pasha refused and called for the whole region to be independent from French rule. In 1921, an Arab fugitive who had been sentenced to death by the French took refuge in the village of Sultan al-Atrash, asking for protection from French authorities. Sultan Pasha al-Atrash welcomed him and vowed to protect him. However, the French entered Sultan Pasha's village and tried to arrest him by force. Sultan Pasha and his fighters attacked the French vehicles which had come to take the fugitive to Damascus, and he did not allow his guest to be arrested. Therefore, a violent guerrilla war erupted between Sultan Pasha's army and the French. Due to French aerial bombardment, Sultan Pasha al-Atrash was eventually forced to flee to British-controlled Jordan in 1922. However, because of British mediation, a peace treaty was signed between Sultan Pasha al-Atrash and the French in 1923, and Sultan Pasha returned to his village in Syria. However, the following year, Sultan al-Atrash revolted against French authorities for a second time, after the French appointed a brutal governor known as Karbier as the governor of the Jabal al-Arab province, where Sultan Pasha resided. In September 1925, Sultan Pasha al-Atrash announced a revolutionary manifesto to liberate Syria from French rule and he began distributing printed statements across major Syrian cities such as Damascus, calling on people to revolt against the French. Sultan al-Atrash and his followers began attacking French forces and his revolution soon spread all over Syria. Although many of the Syrian rebels eventually began fighting each other due to religious differences, Sultan Pasha called on all religious groups in Syria to unite against the French. He called on Sunnis, Shias, Alawis, Druze, Christians and other groups to join forces and rebel against the French. He stated, Religion is for God and the homeland is for all. Eventually, after dozens of French soldiers were killed, the French made catching Sultan al-Atrash their main priority. 
French planes began bombing the region of Jabal al-Arab and many civilians were killed. However, Sultan Pasha and his men managed to shoot down multiple French aircraft. After heavy French bombing, Sultan Pasha al-Atrash and his army fled south and crossed the border into British-controlled Jordan. During his time in Jordan, Sultan al-Atrash was approached by a British officer who offered him a large volume of cash in return for abandoning the revolution and declaring his loyalty to France. Sultan Pasha was deeply offended by this bribe. He grabbed a handful of the sand from the earth and stated, A handful of my country's soil is more valuable to me than all of Britain's gold. Tell your masters that we are on the path of jihad until the end and until the last drop of our blood. Therefore, the British did not allow Sultan Pasha to stay in Jordan due to their new agreement with the French. As a result, Sultan al-Atrash fled further south into the region of Hejaz in Saudi Arabia, where he was welcomed by the tribes of the region. Sultan al-Atrash was sentenced to death and he remained in exile until 1936 when the Treaty of Syrian Independence was signed. In 1936, Sultan al-Atrash returned to Syria and received a huge reception in Damascus. Even after Syria was liberated from French rule, Sultan Pasha al-Atrash remained engaged in the political scene and continued to act as the voice of the oppressed people of Syria. On one occasion, a woman from Aleppo came to Sultan Pasha complaining that her brother had been imprisoned unjustly. Sultan al-Atrash then wrote a letter to President Shukri al-Quwatli demanding that the man be released from prison. As a result, the man was released from jail. Sultan Pasha also continued to influence revolutions in the Middle East. When the 1948 Arab-Israeli war began, Sultan al-Atrash sent hundreds of his followers to fight against the Israeli army. Eighty of Sultan Pasha's fighters died while fighting alongside the Palestinians. In 1958, Sultan al-Atrash supported the Lebanese uprising against the American-backed dictator Kamil Shamon. Eventually, the political situation in Syria also changed when Colonel Adib Shikshakli came to power in a military coup and began killing all of his political opponents. Sultan al-Atrash spoke out against the military dictatorship and was forced to leave Syria for Jordan. He returned to Syria after the death of the president and he continued to speak out against injustice and tyranny. Sultan Pasha was offered prestigious government positions by multiple Syrian regimes, but he rejected all of them, and chose to remain as an influential social leader rather than a political leader. In 1963, another military dictatorship rose to power in Syria when Hafiz al-Assad seized power in a coup. In 1966, many of Sultan Pasha's villagers and family were imprisoned by Hafiz al-Assad. Therefore, Sultan Pasha confronted Hafiz al-Assad and issued a public statement calling for all prisoners to be released. Therefore, Sultan Pasha was marginalized and his followers were banned from placing pictures of Sultan al-Atrash in front of their homes and shops. Relations between Sultan Pasha al-Atrash and the government remained tense until his death. Sultan Pasha al-Atrash passed away in March 1982.